in today's talk, um, the main point of my talk is to give you an overview of the new and upcoming features in Library IDE 2.2. Uh, my name is Greg, by the way, and I work on the Library IDE team. I lead that team. Uh, it's a team of eight uh, people in China. Um, and so here's a picture of the team. And actually, we just added one more team member. He's actually here somewhere, Eric, in front. So he's also on the team, too. So it's really great to have coworkers working with on the same project as me at LifeRay. So um, LifeRay IDE, up to this point, has uh, primarily been focused on Java-related features, Java portlets, uh, JSPs, uh, Service Builder, uh, Maven support, these type of features. Uh, but for the new 2.2 release, uh, actually it was released uh, yesterday, so you can go and get it and install it. You can check my blog, you can check the releases page on LifeRay.com and you can see that. Um, and so for this new uh, 2.2 release, one of the main themes was improving our JavaScript tooling, uh, which was pretty minimal up to this point. Um, so not only JavaScript support, but also um, uh, Alloy UI support as well. Uh, so in the past, our Alloy UI support was limited, uh, and now we've added a lot more in this new release. Um, we're trying to, we want to make Alloy UI tooling a first-class citizen, you know, just as good, well, uh, trying to be as good as is our Java-based, our portlet-based uh, uh, Eclipse tooling. So in 2.2, we've added both a general JavaScript tooling uh, that's better than what you get by default uh, from Eclipse, and then uh, also some specific uh, extensions for Alloy UI. Uh, along with that, we've added some features related to Alloy UI development, uh, namely uh, CSS uh, support, some more features that you might be accustomed to from the Java world. Um, and along with that, we um, added, we went ahead and added many new Java portlet development related features. Um, our team uh, was actually had to help uh, the China team build some internal portlets. And so uh, we found that using our own tool, drinking champagne, as Neil would say, or eating dog food, as other people say, we found that many of the tools we were used to from the just standard Java tooling, when we moved over to portlets, uh, and specifically in JSPs, we found that we didn't have some of these nice features that we were really wishing we could do. So after we got done with some of that internal development, uh, we actually put those features into the next uh, release. Um, along with that, we've also added some new uh, editors to this new release. And then, uh, yeah, like I say, it was released yesterday. So uh, there are many plugins that support JavaScript and Eclipse. Uh, the most common one is the uh, JSDT plugin, which is the standard set of JavaScript tooling in Eclipse. Uh, it understands JavaScript syntax. It can report basic uh, syntax errors, but it's unable to dynamically determine uh, any typing, any type inference uh, that might be available in your JavaScript framework that you're using. Um, it does have support for reading some JS doc and things like that if your library is annotated in that way, but it's it's very limited and it, and it definitely didn't understand or support uh, Alloy UI uh, JavaScript code. So uh, we went to look elsewhere, um, and so we um, uh, there is a new project. It's is a few years old. It's actually a JavaScript type inferencing engine uh, built in JavaScript itself called Turn. Uh, and Turn um, is an open source uh, project on GitHub, and it's, like I say, it's a JavaScript analyzer, uh, and it's written in JavaScript, and it's also built with an API so that it can interface with other editor tooling, other tooling for editors. Uh, now, that was just the JavaScript piece. So when it comes to Eclipse, uh, there's another framework that's, that's open source that's been around for not quite a year called Turn.java. And what it does, it's a Java wrapper and a Java API wrapper around the JavaScript uh, analysis engine. And so there's an Eclipse plugin that comes with this tool or comes with this framework. So we uh, have integrated with that and we have uh, uh, pulled that into Lafrey IDE. Um, one of the other pieces of that framework is not only is it um, the, the actual code analyzer, but there's actually a server that runs uh, to make it performant. Uh, the turn engine itself runs in Node.js, so we need to execute that 
And if you're working from an editor standpoint, you're likely going to be making many type inferences uh, as you're working in the editor. So um, the way it works is there's actually a turn, there's actually a Node.js embedded Node.js server running inside of Eclipse as a separate process, but it's all managed and it, you know, it cleans up after itself. So it's not going to uh, run your CPU out of battery, a laptop out of battery in, or anything like that. So that's turn.java uh, and also the integrated uh, turn.server. So here's actually a diagram of how it works in the latest release. So on the left, you have the um, Eclipse JVM, your, your editor, your IDE. And then once you are working with any JavaScript source, uh, not only standalone JavaScript files, but embedded JavaScript inside a, an HTML or JSP file, uh, it actually, what it does is uh, anytime you perform an action in the editor where you need to infer the type, so um, code assist, uh, um, navigation, uh, searching, uh, anything like this, this is what happens. It will collect up that source code along with any related source code that's in your uh, Java project, or in, in our case, in your portlet project. So we read your portlet configuration. We read what additional JavaScript files you're using. Uh, we collect all those together. We send it across as a, a JSON request to the to the turn server, the Node.js process that's running in a separate, um, separate uh, process. And then it analyzes it. It runs through its routine, its whatever modules you have installed in the turn server, uh, and whatever plugins you have that execute along with the, the base engine. And of course, all of this is done uh, by a Lifer IDE in the background. Uh, there is a way to configure which modules and plugins run. I'll show you that in a minute. So then it, it runs through that. And then uh, you, along with the query, we send it, uh, we ask it, hey, we're, we're wanting to know the type of this object, uh, this string. The, you know, the, the developer is here. This is his context. What's the type information? So then it responds with what it has determined is the best it can guess uh, what his type is. Using all of the hints uh, that it can analyze, the JS doc, uh, any other type of duck typing uh, that, it could, that it could see. OK, so here is an example of, on the top left, is the existing JavaScript tooling in Eclipse. If you just go download from eclipse.org, and you create JavaScript like this where you have a, an anonymous function, uh, and then you uh, pass into it some object, and then you extend that object with some function property, a string property, uh, and then you go to invoke uh, code complete on uh, that object. Now, the Eclipse default plugin knows that my object is just a standard JavaScript object, so it does give you some type. It can figure out it's an object, but that's all that it knows. Now, if you look on the bottom right-hand side, we have um, this one is the same file, the same two files, uh, but now it's actually uh, has turn has analyzed it, and so you can see in the code complete uh, there are two additional completions that weren't in the previous list. One is the my method function property, and then the strings. So, and it actually knows that that's a string array because it was able to look at the split method from uh, the built-in uh, ECMAScript, the built-in uh, JavaScript spec, and knows that split returns an array, so it knows the type of strings is an array. OK, so there, there it is again. So now I'm, I'm asking for some type information for the strings object, and it knows that's of type array. So you can see it's given me uh, methods that are on all string arrays in JavaScript. And here is just an example of what you might like to do in a larger JavaScript application in a portlet where maybe you have uh, multiple JavaScript files. So by default, any JavaScript file that's in your, um, that's been added in your portlet config. So if you go into uh, Lafrey Portlet XML and you say include these JavaScript files, all of those will be added when we do the turn inferencing. So here, the actual definition of my object is been defined in a second file, but then the the turn server still knows um, it can still give you completions based on that type that was defined in another 
another uh, file. Now you can manually um, change this configuration. Lafrey IDE by default will set up a default configuration based on your portlet project config, but if you have something custom that you want, there's other scripts that you want to include, other frameworks, uh, you can configure that manually per project. So here is a little bit of the, the new settings that you'll see uh, if you install the latest release. Uh, now all these features are, well, I'll cover that in a minute. Um, you can see here, by default, it uses the embedded uh, Node.js server. You can also switch it to using your native uh, Node.js if you don't want to install the embedded one. You can tell it to just use the one you have on your system, and that works too. So this actual feature uh, must be enabled uh, on a project-by-project -project basis in Eclipse. However, any new uh, Lafray project, Lafray portlet project, will have this feature enabled. Uh, by default. You can disable it, of course, but uh, the idea is that if, you know, coming from the Java world, I, I, I need some type information that makes me comfortable. So uh, we just enable it by default. And here you can see that the modules that we have selected, uh, so like you say, this, the turn engine is open source and there's many uh, open source um, plugins for it. Uh, we've also added our own that support Lafray technology. But here you can see that we've for the particular uh, project I've selected, we automatically have uh, Alloy UI, uh, LifeRay, and YUI plugins added to the uh, turn server. So when the turn server executes, we tell it to run those modules. Uh, and you can see if you have other JavaScript frameworks that you want that you'll use, um, you can enable those as well. Okay, so that's just general JavaScript tooling that we've added. Now, specifically uh, with LifeRay, um, the turn a framework by itself didn't understand anything about uh, LifeRay frameworks, Allo UI, YUI, or even the built-in uh, LifeRay JavaScript objects that you have available as a Portlet developer. So we actually developed plugins for those. Uh, we worked with the, the turn.java um, uh, maintainer, and we got those plugins developed. So we've added three new plugins for turn that handle YUI, Allo UI, uh, and um, the Lafray objects. Um, and so uh, Turn also works on embedded scripts inside HTML uh, pages. Um, and so by default, Eclipse only thought script tags were JavaScript. Of course, as uh, Lafray Portlet JSP uh, developers, they likely use the AUI script tag, which does all the nice stuff like moving the JavaScript to the bottom of the page and all of that stuff. Uh, so by default, uh, the Eclipse JSP editor didn't know what to do with the AUI script, didn't know that it was JavaScript. So we wouldn't get any syntax coloring, wouldn't get any code completion, code validation. So we've extended the JSP editor now. So it actually knows, hey, uh, AUI script tag, is a, that's JavaScript inside there. So treat it as such. So you get your outline, navigation, all of the features you, you're used to in a standalone um, standalone editor. Also, we've added many new uh, code templates. So when you're writing new Allo UI code, uh, you can just use, we've taken all of the examples from allouai.com and we've made them code templates so that you can quickly type that code in and save you a few copy and paste. So I mentioned CSS. Um, Allo UI is also, a, 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 um, it's a big framework, so it also includes the CSS support. So we have added some uh, new CSS tooling to give you uh, code assist and navigation for um, CSS classes and CSS IDs. So you can see here, uh, now I've just got a main.js in my portlet. And if I uh, invoke code assist, in there, it knows that, hey, uh, you've got the Alloy UI plugin in, in, enabled by default, so we'll give you the Alloy UI objects. Both, both the Allo AUI and the YUI, they're both in there. And you can see that it's got the document embedded JS doc documentation in the, uh, in the hover there. And the same thing here. So when you, uh, if you go to the use method, um, and then you have the the use documentation that's from the Allo UI, or actually, I guess uses from YUI. Um, it it overlaps them, so you can't really tell 
Uh, actually, this one comes from AUI. You can see in the screenshot there, you can see which plugin is providing that, um, that completion. Okay, so here, um, this is the next piece. So term, term by default can figure out several things, but it can't figure out everything. And so that's where the, uh, the term plugin for Allo UI comes in. And in this case, we actually, uh, the, what the plugin does is it tells turn, hey, if you see code like this, if you see a use call, and then if you see that they're using a UI, and then the type of the A that's coming in, it's going to look like this. So now it actually can give you some type information on that A variable. And it also changes based on what you use in the use tag. So here I've, I've used a UI button as my, um, uh, as the module there. And so it knows that, okay, the A type has these new top level constructors I can call. And then also, okay, it knows what the button type is. Um, and so it knows that the button types have uh, a render method. So you can see that completion available. So the yui.js term plugin also contributes uh, type information. So uh, a.1 returns a yui node, and then all yui nodes have certain methods. So in this case, the table type has you know, these method completions, and those are provided by the YUI plugin. So the current version of the AUI uh, plugin is AUI2. I'll talk more about AUI4 in a minute. So um, if, as you've done any um, LaFray JSPs, and you've you know that you can access a LaFray, um, a top-level global object called LaFray, and it has various fields. There are also object fields that are available. And so we have completion for that as well. That's coming from the Lafray.js turn plugin. Okay, talking a little bit about AUI4, uh, this framework also um, can support jQuery. So here's just some jQuery uh, turn plugin. You can see the completion for those. So here's you have a jQuery callback handler. And then there's the type information for the parameters is available. So it also works. This is just a screenshot of it showing it working in a UI script tag in a JSP. Uh, also, I mentioned about the AUI templates. We've, uh, we've automatically pre-populated the JSP template library in Eclipse with lots of AUI templates so that you can write that code faster. From, from the JSP editor. So here's some of the CSS features. Um, basically, we give you completions for uh, CSS class names and CSS IDs. And uh, also, you can complete, if you're using like a standalone HTML file uh, and you do a, a link element or a source for a JavaScript, complete the file names there based what's in your, your project. And so here it also supports uh, IDs. In, in this screenshot, you can see the, the IDs are defined in a different CSS file. They're not in, embedded in the, the JSP, and we still provide the completions. Also, hover support and hyperlink navigation. So you can hover and see more info. You can hyperlink and, and jump to um, the definition. Also, uh, this works for tag libs, so CSS class, uh, style class for both default JSP uh, tag libs, I mean the Lafray JSP tag libs, also in the facelets definitions. Uh, we sup you can get the uh, code completion there. And also here you can see not only do you get the completion for the um, your own custom defined CSS classes, but any ones that are defined in the bootstrap. If you're using Lafray 6.2, you can see the bootstrap classes as well. So like we're doing buttons in the screenshot there on the bottom. So I need to mention this, is that if you try to install this and use this today, if you have an existing Lafray IDE or Developer Studio install and you upgrade to the 2.2 release, it won't include all of these features I've just shown. 
because while the features are ready for wider use, they're, they're um, still, uh, and they're not experimental, but you know, we, we still have some work to go. So they're, they're not installed by default. And also not everyone needs it or wants that extra install footprint of the embedded Node.js and all of that. So we made it as a separate uh, installable feature. So if you just go to the update site, you'll see both the normal IDE feature and then the Allo UI one as well. Okay, so let me go through the Portlet developer stuff real quick that we added. Um, if you've ever used uh, Service Builder from LifeRay, and you notice that when you have a service impl, you don't actually directly call the impl, you call a util, kind of a copy of that method, and then through various proxies and AOP magic, you actually get to your implementation. Uh, the problem is if you're working from a JSP, uh, or f or even from a, a, a Java code or from like a portlet code or JSP, you want to navigate often to that implementation to fix a bug or to add a feature or whatever, but you have to look it up by name. You have to go find it or, or search for it. You want to just F3, open type, open method right from your uh, editor. and you, But you can't do that because of all of the the the, um, the middlemen in the way. So we added, we extended the Java editor and actually added a new hyperlink target. So from um, the util call for the service builder method, you can actually jump straight to the actual final implementation, which is where you're wanting to go when you hit F3 anyway. So it, it jumps to there. Um, it also works for service wrappers. So let's say you have a couple of service wrappers and you wanna see your wrapper. Or let's say you even have multiple wrappers of the same service. So you can, uh, open the service wrapper using the same hyperlink. And the way you do this in Eclipse is you don't just hit F3, you hold down Control or Command, I guess, on Mac. And then when you click it, it gives you the additional hyperlink targets um, because there's more than one definition. So here you can see you can select which wrapper you want. Um, if you're developing Lifery portlets, you've likely used the action URL um, name where you just, where this maps, this is a convention in the NVC portlets where the name matches to a portlet process action method. So we've added a link for you. So if you're in your JSP, you can click on the name attribute, hit F3, and it will jump to the, um, the implementation in your portlet. It supports both MVC and uh, JSR 2.0 standard. So here, um, here you can see actually that's code complete, which I'll show you in a minute, but it's jumping to this, this new one. Um, so not only hyperlink support, but validation and code completion is available as well. So if you don't remember the name exactly, uh, we'll, we can do code complete on it. And it basically just um, looks up all your portlets, JSR or MVC portlets, and shows you which methods that you could call. And then it completes that. And then on the bottom, if you type in one that doesn't exist, uh, it will actually tell you. Also supports the action command that's used by some of Laferry Global Services. Um, but like I was saying, if you if you if you reference a action method doesn't exist, uh, we actually go a step further, and just like in the Java editor that you used to in Eclipse, you can generate that code from your JSP. So. Uh, if you find out that the the name doesn't exist, you can look in the uh, the markers and you can invoke a quick fix, control one, quick fix, and then actually generate a new method based in its asking. The reason it's asking which one is that it detected in this project there were actually two portlets. It didn't know which one to add it to. I mean, yeah, which portlet class to add the action method to. So it actually asks you which one do you want to add. If you only have one, then it wouldn't ask and just add it. We do the same thing for Laferay message properties. So any Laferay tag lib where it's looking up in language.properties, it's looking up in your resource bundle. Um, we add hover, hyperlink, code assist for this. So here you can see that I can hyperlink to the resource bundle. It's also saying that it didn't find it in your resource bundle. It also gives you code assist. If you have a big resource bundle, you can get code assist for the, uh, the key names. And then Finally, the way most JSP developers do it is, you know, when they're, or more portly, most portly developers do it, they're building their JSP, they're building their UI, they likely put a bunch of 
labels and, and fields and tabs, and then they generate the keys later. Um, so what, what you can do here is that you can go ahead and just code up your all of your um, res all of your UI pieces that use resource bundles, and then with just one quick fix, you can say generate it for one, or you can actually uh, fix it for all of them. From this dialog, you can hit select all, and it will just generate new keys for all of those missing, and it will it will try to guess at what you th what you think the English wants to be based on if you use that uh, standard the way Liferay does it. If it doesn't, it'll just leave it blank, and you get to fill it in later. And then you can invoke that a uh, quick quick assist as well. Um, also, we added XML search. So, like uh, you know, within Eclipse, it's nice to be able to um, select a class and say, "Show me all the references to this class." Uh, now we've extended that in Eclipse. So when you click on a portlet and say, "Show me all the references to this portlet," will actually return where you refer to that in the portlet XML. So here in the search uh, view, you can see that it's saying, "Oh." The Portlet XML class, the Portlet XML file, uh, references this class. And then, if you go to the Portlet XML class, the Portlet XML file, you can get code assist on the the, the Portlet class name. So not only did this happen from Java to XML, but it, we actually have a link between XML to XML. So from the Lafre display or Lafre Portlet XML, it references the Portlet XML. So we have a link there. So if you Break one, it will tell you when you've broken it, or if you search for one, it will show you the references from other XML files. Okay, so quickly, just let me fly through these last ones. We have a new uh, portal properties editor, so if you want to edit your portal EXT properties, you can do that now. You can double click it. If you have portal EXT in, um, uh, in your Liferay home, it will show up in the server's view, so you can double click and edit it there and then get code complete on the portal.property names. A uh, new Liferay Portlet XML editor that supports like stage, stage data model handler and things like that. We revamped the template editor to support uh, the new 6.2 bootstrap. And also, um, this is one thing, when we were doing that in those internal projects, we were creating new workspaces and we were saying, ah, I've got to redefine all my servers, all my SDKs over and over again. So we added a feature now that when you create a new workspace, it will detect if you've ever previously ever created uh, a defined Alafrey SDK, Alafrey runtime, Alafrey server, and it will just give you the option. It'll pop up in your in your tray, in your system tray. Say, hey, I've detected you've done this before. Would you? I mean, you've defined these Alafrey instances before. Do you want to just import those? And it will just allow you to quickly import that. Uh, Maven archetypes, you can specify those now, um, set them on the preferences. You can create a database profile, like if in, in Portal EXT, if you set up a database, you can create a profile really quickly now, and then you can explore that database from within Eclipse. Um, we have global hotkeys. Uh, you know, if you're doing build service builder a lot, you're wanting to call build service several times as you make changes. Now you can just, uh, from a global hotkey, control alt V or W. It'll just run the, the appropriate Maven goal automatically in the background. You don't have to. Um... Okay, so I don't really have much time to talk about 3.0 because I want to leave some time for questions. I have a few minutes, right? Yeah, a couple, couple of minutes. minutes. So let me ask questions. And then, um, uh, yeah, I didn't have time for a demo either. Uh, so if you want to see some of the JavaScript features, also, uh, there's another plugin, Angular. And so you can support all of the features of building Angular JS. Uh, project so I can show you that. So just come find me and I can demo some of that for you or even talk about uh, IDE 3.0, but you'll just have to come to next year's DEF CON to find out about what's going to be in IDE 3.0. So um, here's a preview. IDE 7.0 Milestone 2, and then in from Eclipse we show the, 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 um, the existing uh, OSGI bundles, what the state of them they're running, and you can deploy to it, redeploy, all that good stuff. So thanks, everyone. Any questions? We have time for one question. Hey, come find me. Uh, I can show you. Okay. Yeah. Liferay what version? Previous versions. Six one. Six one. Yes. Yes. And um, yeah. So Alloa UI two is supported now. Uh, uh, we're going to add a plugin for Alloa UI three and Alloa UI four. 
return so that based on what version of life or what version of alloy UI you're using, you can get the various, uh, the correct type inferencing. Okay, so we'll have to leave it here. Thanks, Greg. Thank you, guys.